Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity Bottom Right Hand Corner. We have Arson starting as the Mustard Yellow Turn. Upper left hand corner, we have Fisheye starting as the Marine Green, Teal Green, Green Protoss. So I'm going to experiment. I've had some comments here and there uh, regarding the production tab. A couple people have re wanted it, desired. The desire is to have it up here. I have left it off for my own personal edification to try to improve. Part of it is, is like with the replay, we get the SCV count and the probe count. And I feel like I get better at commentary actually having none of this where it's more in the dark. Supply should always be there, I suppose, for general commentary, just to be able to get an idea of pe whether people are ahead or not. But, whoa, what did I hit? Hold on, gotta figure out, there it goes. We're not doing it in this thing though. So pulling it back, we're gonna keep the HD graphics. Accidental t tab on the keyboard there. <coughs> so anyway, we're gonna keep this up here. Uh, give some feedback whether you like it or not. I think there's like a 10 game delay between when this was recommended and I started doing it. So there's probably gonna be another delay as to how many games I get out with it activated and when you guys are able to get feedback as to whether you like it or not. Uh, but let me know whether you prefer it or don't prefer it. And I guess, I mean, people leave comments in chat and upvote or downvote whatever the the comments are and that will give me uh, good, a good ability to gauge whether you prefer it or prefer it off. Anyway, getting into the match, as you've been able to see in the production tab, we're having a gateway assimilator opener for Fisheye, top right hand corner. The map is Circuit Breaker. This is BSL uh, Group D losers match. And I'm actually a little bit shocked to see Fisheye here. Arson, another strong competitor. I think either of these guys could still make it out of the bracket, but they got to get through each other first and tough match both directions. I think Fisheye was looking sharper in the initial stages. We'll see if that continues to be the case. This is going to be a rough game one opener for him though, because on Circuit Breaker, you do have, first of all, these wide ramps to help protect that, nat that natural expansion with Siege Tech. And on Circuit Breaker, you also have, going ahead and go for the map reveal, this nearby third, which allows Terrans to, if they're not doing factory pushes, if they're not doing something along those lines, they can always go ahead and fold back and go for that 200 or just the 3-2 uh, upgrade sort of timing. It looks like two SCVs are pulling off gas here after getting gas for that factory. So it looks like it is gonna be factory expand. Fisheye going for initial scouting bottom left hand corner. He is skipping the initial zealot, which will be beneficial considering it is cross map position. And I'm not sure that zealot would be able to get a lot done with the distance traveled anyway. Arson looks like he's gonna cycle around and at second position, get that scout and be able to see that cybernetics core spinning. But point being Fisheye's gotta make something happen. And I feel like maybe the best way to take care of Terran on this map as a Protoss player is try to play guerrilla style, expand aggressively, try to make sure you get an observer in the base. Getting that observer in the base is gonna be absolutely critical for Fisheye so he can keep an eye on the factory count and know whether he can sneak additional expansions or not. SV hanging out in the lines as that Dragoon. It was kind of a lazy kind of meandering SCV thing is just hanging out with the probes, looking around for a half second, taking the damage, exiting right back out. Looks like Arson, once he has that third Marine out in the front, is going to go ahead and plop down his command center. He's already got that Vulture on the way as well. Dragoon trailing that SCV, wanting to scold it for its shenanigans in its base, but it looks like we are going to see one gate expand from Fisheye as well. And I almost want to see one gate expand robotics facility with a quick emphasis on observers just to rush observers into that base for Fisheye. Opposite side, Arson maybe will want to produce an early Goliath. Oh, wow, that Dragoon going a little bit too far, taking a lot of base damage. As a result, that's really going to soften it up. That also opens up the Vulture to go a wandering for a bit because I think it can win a heads up fight. Now, four Marines <coughs> on the front. We do have the machine shop down and mines researching. Dragoon gonna sneak back in. Looks like there's an initial pylon and a Dragoon blockading otherwise. And it looks like we are seeing a robo to follow. Critical thing for Arson opposite direction is taking care of the observers that might have wandered into his base, trying to keep an eye on that shimmer and take care of them. Dragoon wisely moving back and blockading that ramp. The second Dragoon about halfway finished. So the Vulture happy to go ahead and confirm that that Nexus was constructing. Gonna go ahead and cycle back out and maybe play some mines. Taking, well, nope, never mind. They're just gonna pass each other. Give each other glares, angry glares, but not exchange fire as they're returning to home base. 
second gateway after robotics, sorry, third gateway after robotics. So that is going to allow a few additional Dragoons. I assume this is to play against what might have been a follow-up Vulture Harass from Arson. So you got three gate Dragoon, which allows a little bit of a heavier Dragoon presence. That is another problem for Protoss at protecting that third. You can see how wide it is and how much space there is for Vultures to go ahead and sneak in and assail probe lines. So I don't know if Arson's going to capitalize on that, but having more Dragoons in the mid game can be really, really helpful. So I like this play from Fisheye. Mine already being placed there can punish anti lack of observer play if the Reavers were making their way out. Also would be a potential shuttle spotter who is making its way out. Also a mine out in the front just to see if there's latent Dragoon pressure. Trio of mines to help pad the front in case there was pressure that direction. Supply counts looking about dead even. Second factory coming online. Siege tech being researched and an engineering bay plopping down plus one weapons already halfway on the way for arson. And everything's looking like he is going to play it a little bit, at least this stage. And I, this is one of the problems. I said this actually in the butter map in game one. Uh, I won't point out my own mistakes. Never mind. You guys spot the mistakes. And then give me feedback in PMs. I won't reveal the mistakes I made so that whatever. Anyway. Uh, it looks as though... There's the academy. It looks as though he's going to go for more long-term macro play. The Vulture's confirming that third on the way. The Observer racing across the map. We do have an initial turret on the edge. Turret near the natural expansion to help also play anti-DT. Starport plopping down. I think that's for plus two weapons. And the Academy also being constructed. Now this, this is actually a critical moment here is does the Observer get past the missile turret ring and does it do so without alerting its opponent. So two shots. Repositioning. I think it might have gotten the edge. We'll try to go to fisheye vision here. Yeah, is able to get over that factory line, but gets wiped out. And that's unfortunate because it sees the third factory, but it doesn't it's not able to confirm the fourth factory. So instead, fisheye is going to have to is relegated just sitting outside the natural expansion trying to keep an eye on troop counts as they grow from that location, which gives him a little bit less of an alert as far as what he needs to have in back-end production in order to kick things into gear. Initial comps at, <laughs> we do have a Citadel of a Dune in place. Some Dragoons making their way up and you can see the large stockade, like that word, stockade of Dragoons there. Some Vultures pocketing in near the fourth, recognizing that Fisheye to keep up economically is going at least to stay ahead economically might want to go ahead and grab that 12 o'clock base. Dragoons making their way, but man, those sneaky vultures pocketed behind. Are they going to catch each other? Okay, moving out now. A mine? Ah, uh, that's unfortunate. They might have been able to hide for quite some time. It may even pick off the initial probe, but instead dropping a mine, I don't know if that's going to provide anything for Arson here. Are they still hidden? They're still hidden. Might be able to kill this probe. This is... Sending out another probe is a significant delay. But no, not able to kill the probe as the Nexus drops. Still hiding there. Fisheye sees them. He just hasn't uh, opted to attack them yet for whatever reason. So mercy on both ends, it looks like. The probe going to survive. The Dragoons... Okay, now they're reacting. Like, wait a minute. Stargate. I'll ignore them in their deaths. Stargate <laughs> being built. We have an Arbital Tribunal. We also have Forge upgrading plus one weapons to try to have some weapon ability, that Observer being pushed off the front. Dragoons marching forward, going through some additional... I think those are some vultures, actually, that are to the north. But you can see a command center being built to the north, additional base being grabbed. The Observer sees that third being built, and I'm assuming Fisheye... I actually feel like he might want to expand to the bottom left, but Arson is expecting him to maybe try to expand to the top right. He's got that mine up there to provide advance alert. And it looks like the Observer died out on the front as well. <clears throat> Another fact, wow, slew of factories coming online. So we're going up to a six count, which allows Arson to start producing a serious amount of troops. Vulture speed being upgraded, plus two weapons on the way, plus one armor on the way. I'm not sure whether he's going to bother with a push or not. Not a lot of siege tanks here. He's 
played it pretty thin on the, the siege tank lines. But supply counts are very much in Fisheye's favor. But a massive amount of that is in workers. So a big worker lead, but he hasn't been saturated across a lot of bases to really capitalize on it. He does have the Stargate being... Uh, war uh, he's got the Arbiters warping in. He has Stasis upgrading, so he is going to have that option. Looks like that mine actually is still there. But I also want to note that Fisheye has yet to take territory across the map. He hasn't forced... So that the engagements move up from ours and he can just try to move across the map. And if Fisheye doesn't stop it, there it's just a hop, skip, and a jump to wipe out a lot of those expansions. And I think, again, success oftentimes on this map looks like a control tower being dropped. So we might see some vulture drops as a follow-up. Also from Arson, he's tacking on to go up to that full fact that full late game factory count of potentially nine, it looks like. With support, a couple of idle SCVs here in the background, but a big supply lead at the moment for Fisheye. Scouting out the bottom left to make sure there's no mines in the way. And uh, yeah, with that 40 supply lead, actually, Fisheye in a pretty strong position. Granted, he's mostly playing, he's mostly gateway man right this second. He doesn't have the High Templar out in the field. He doesn't have a lot of Arbiters out. And as far as upgrades, he doesn't have plus one weapons yet. But the, he might be able to make up for it, just the fact that he's macroed so well, and he's got a 40 supply lead. Initial vultures starting to sneak out across the map. There are cannons at the 12 o'clock location, and it looks like, yeah, there's a pylon ring, but maybe some decent reinforcements can make their way up here. They need to hurry up, though. Yeah, not quite able to get around, but that, I still think they can get some probes through that edge. Might actually help Fisheye, because I believe 70 is optimal. Actually, the Arbit are going to walk out, reveal itself. Cloak. Ah, not able to cloak some probes. So a couple probes. Three kills on that vulture. So some value right there. Observer hanging out at 3 o'clock to see if there's any movements to grab an additional base. But Arson, again, just playing towards the weapons upgrade. He is just going to sit and shell up on these three bases and go for max, it looks like. He's got the science vessel already out. He's got EMP nearly researched which I can check in the upper left-hand corner rather than poking on the actual base. Thank you, production tab. And Fisheye has some units staged to the bottom left, but he still hasn't grabbed additional expansions. It looks like he's going to expand to the upper right first, which I'm not sure I like because that mine did trigger off, and so that may be an indicator to Arson as far as the direction of the kind of hidden stuff out in the field. We'll see. 200 supply out now for Fisheye, so it's up to him to make something happen one direction or another. He does have plus one weapons online. He's been sitting on single upgrades. He's got a shuttle to maybe do some shuttle bombs with those zealots. But as far as, ooh, big comsat finds that army in the middle map. But again, he doesn't, he's playing pure gateway man style. He doesn't have a lot of Psy Storm. And considering you've got this bridge architecture there and look at the siege tanks just waiting on the opposite side, a single siege is very tough to crack that defense. Also, looks like vultures might be able to make their way top right. Clear some damage there. It looks like instead they're going to move to the 12 o'clock location. This is enough vultures probably to take down that cannon and still get some probe kills. Additional cannon being built. But yeah, some bonus kills. Reinforcements making their way that direction, but not before the worker count is basically going to even up. Granted, Fisheye has a, a deep bank to work with here, but losing a lot of workers at an expansion is always frustrating, and it is going to provide time for Arson to go ahead and get potentially an economic lead, or at least uh, play a little bit of economic catch-up, I suppose, in this instance. Two additional Nexus dropping, one in the upper right-hand corner, one in the bottom left-hand corner. I actually kind of like that he's grabbing, he's doing a caddy corner. And while I was doing that, I missed, it looks like a recall into the main. Shame on me. Looks like it is catching a lot of supply depots. I was so focused on those vultures doing whatever not that I miss Arson's base getting absolutely mauled. All sorts of supply depots gone. Arson having great difficulty because it looks like the troops were all at this location. There's still not. A lot of them aren't moving from that location. So relying on units that are coming out of the factories, which they're not coming out fast because, again, he's in the red. So massive amounts of damage inflicted. And Arson dropping a huge amount of supply once again. Let's see. It looks like that single zealot is going to get wiped out. I th looks like the Arbiter did die as part of that attack. But. So Arbiter gone. I don't see a second Stargate. There is another Arbiter out in the field. But we'll see how it goes. The looks like the probes also are going to be spotted along those mines. 
Command center floating towards the six o'clock location. Looks like Arson wanted to grab that, but maybe not feeling as confident after that last recall, which also makes sense. And it looks like though, the observer is here, but Fisheye now reacting. I was about to say he hasn't yet reacted to go ahead and stiny that six o'clock expand. Science vessel moving out that direction, some vultures streaming in to try to go ahead and mine and defend. This is kind of a funnel to walk into as well. As long as siege tanks are there without support, I don't know that Fisheye is going to be able to crack it, but the tanks aren't sieged yet. Never mind, we got three tanks sieged. The zealots are gone. We still have a shuttle though. Fisheye doesn't like it without the zealots leading the way, which is wise. And there's a lot of mines. So it looks like Arson is going to be able to go to go ahead and grab this six o'clock location. He's behind in supply, but does have a larger bank. But more bases are up here from Fisheye, which is important because he needs to grow that economy. And let's see if he hasn't pulled probes off the main. I'll see some Protoss, especially pros, will actually pull probes off the main in the natural expansion early at this stage to kind of leave emergency minerals down the line. And these probes need to stop. What are we paying you for? Do probes get paid? I mean, they're little uh, robotic automatons. <laughs> I mean, what do we, what do they pay them in? Electric, something, the Kala? I don't know. Anyway, Fisheye still has the massive economic lead. He has the supply lead, but that supply gap is closing and he's way down on upgrades. So he's got level two weapons versus level three, level two now. And Arson is slowly taking territory. And I do still feel like it's up to Fisheye to engage on him a bunch of turrets in the way gonna try a recall recall a massive recall a lot of it lands and still an attack from the left there's still a lot of siege tanks here on the high ground however but there is an open window to go ahead and attack that command center and maybe force a lift off it looks like the siege tanks not quite in range so the command center lifting off focus fire on it from the dragoons vultures rushing in to engage to push these dragoons back and emp is going to clear the shields on those dragoons and that's going to send fisheye back and after that engagement he's down on supply the command center is going to be able to rebuild he does have a slight worker lead overall i will say if this continues to play out like that that wasn't the best trade arson if he is going to stay on smaller bases and just try to hold the bottom right quadrant he needs to stage a massive attack into fisheye at some point Otherwise, Fisheye is just going to be able to just have more resources and more production. As long as he gets a couple gateways out in the field and looks like he is starting to construct. He's already got the gateways in the upper right. Zealot clearing mines here at the 6 o'clock location. Vultures once again floating forward to grab some additional mineage. It looks like now probes being pulled off to the bottom left. More probes going up to the upper right as well. Arson now making moves in the form of a lot of vultures. And also, sorry, I missed a drop and Siege missing it today. Zealots trying to engage bottom right, or uh, I should say the natural in top right. Siege tank support looks like they might be able to take a Nexus down. And this isn't much of a dedication of attack forces from Arson. So two siege tanks and a group of vultures Look like they're going to be able to get the Nexus, which is fantastic. However, an Arbiter, once again, floating into the main, getting another recall, everything getting EMP'd, but again, having to rely on reinforcements from the factory line. I'm not sure if this is the best recall point at this stage, unless he is able to focus fire some of these factories down, however. The Zelt's charging forward, able to catch a couple units. So Nexus down, top right corner. I don't know that this counter recall it got it looks like a supply depot might be able to get a second supply depot i don't know if that was a bonus recall for fisheye overall don't think that uh yeah it did a lot did as much for him as he wanted to also able to get that drop ship back out leaving the siege tanks to prevent additional mining bottom right the dragoon's still having trouble oh never mind it's gonna say man they're gonna have so much trouble but uh no, they are having trouble looks like okay they're finally getting wiped out Man, that was five Dragoons very rapidly via some fumbling through a mine wall. So Arson actually getting a pretty good trade right there as well. Now moving out, Arson all of a sudden with the larger bank and the supply lead. Arbiter moving out looks like he was thinking about pressing forward for an additional recall, getting caught midfield. Two tank siege, a recall short 
along that tap, top hand edge, but Arson going to be able to respond to it very rapidly. Fisheye's army coming from the left as well, though Dragoons look like they're going to be pulling the far way around, and I think that is just too many siege tanks with too many upgrades to really inflict anything. Group repair as well from Arson to go ahead and save the 6 o'clock location. And Arson all of a sudden looking like he's in a really, really solid position. Although losing some free units on the traffic jam on the ramp up. Pushing through, the Zealot's going to, again, they have no Arbiter support, they have no I Templar support, and I don't think Fisheye, he doesn't have the supply lead, and with Gateway Man, supply lead helps a bit. This isn't much of an attack force to take on this massive amount of troops. Looks like, okay, now there's an Arbiter support, but EMP, or sorry, that uh, Stasis hasn't been deployed, been cast, been summoned. Arson slowly moving out to go ahead and grab this mineral only. So it looks like he's going to basically... He'll have some minerals lost. But he is going to slowly be able to make his way to bottom left. Zealots getting splorched. That is what that sound effect is. More Zealots moving up. And getting splorched. Arbiter pushing in. Gets a stasis, but... There are no troops to do any sort of follow-up. Vultures midfield. Good number of mines. There's no Observer, so bad Observer Discipline from Fisheye here, so he's going to end up taking a lot of damage from these mines, and I believe this is what we saw a lot of uh, previous Protoss lose to in these sort of matches as well. Look at the blue goo that I missed in that assault. So Fisheye not able to group up a lot of these armies, and so it's just bleeding a lot of troops, plus no Observer support. Just getting wrecked out here on the front. He did have a pretty solid stasis, but... With the troops out of position, these engagements, he is just really not getting exchanges he's looking for. Particularly just running into every mine along the way. It's like hitting every pothole on your way to work right there. So the Dragoon's wiped out. Now Fisheye has trouble where I don't think he can defend bottom left. A few Dragoons are moving their way up. And this is a situation where he needs to start pulling things out of Arson's hands, and Arson is just slowly rolling around, wiping out everything, and there really doesn't seem to be a lot of risk to any of his bases in the interim. We do, we do have observers down here, it looks like, to maybe spot some good engagement points, but fortunately for Fisheye, he does still have a lot of resources to work with. He still has some gateways top right, so losing bottom left isn't necessarily the worst thing in the world. Arson does need to start taking additional bases because his main and his natural are mined out, and that third is somewhat thin, so... And he's not mining very efficiently here at the 6 o'clock, so that resource advantage could evaporate very, very quickly. Where Fisheye, I believe, has those going out. A big attack now moving to the 6 o'clock, this time a little bit more cohesive, and again, the tank's unseige, so hit a lot of mines on the way, but it's just too much and it doesn't matter. So still creating in. Arson's going to have to pull back troops from bottom left. Some SCVs are going to distance mine at the mineral only here. Ooh, Stasis misses. I feel like it should have hit more than that. Zealot's also going the wrong direction around. Command Center is floating out that direction. I believe that might be from the natural expansion. We'll check that in just a second once this fight is cleared up. But it looks like Fisheye felt like just an A move across this territory. Is going to have some success. The dropship flooding in. To provide some distraction? Potentially, maybe just part of this grouping, the command center is just going to float anyway. Arson bullying in to these four dragoons that are remaining, wiping out everything that's left. Now the Arbiter remains. I don't see any Goliaths out as of yet, so they might be able to get some pot shots, but it's not going to shut down mining there. Actually, no, it looks like it was built on site and very... So Arson playing this very conservatively. The siege tanks have, while all that was happening, wiped out everything bottom left. Some probes are huddle, huddled in the corner, hoping to escape. It is possible that they could get recalled out of there. Third base is nearly out for Fisheye, so the 12 o'clock's mining pretty well for him. But he's effectively three base versus two base. So now trying to grow... Oh, actually, I take that back. Four base versus two base, although these mine a little bit oddly. Going to try to grab that three o'clock and again play for the long game. 
Arson down a bit of supply, but honestly not so much supply that I think it makes a difference at this stage given the upgrade differential. Although the upgrades have started to even out a little bit, we are starting to see some, some shield upgrades and finally some High Templar are joining this army and that is going that could radically change Fisheye's engagements. Plus we have a lot of Arbiters that have now staged out. More probes transferring, uh, transferring to the upper right. Maybe actually they're making their way Securitously to the three o'clock location. We'll have to see. Now it looks like they're just going to go bottom right. Another recall moving into the six o'clock. Big recall. A clutch defense matrix to at least keep the siege tank active, but Psystorm Storm obliterating a lot of these attack troopings. So this base effectively shut down. The army wiped out very rapidly, but only one, two, three SCV remain. I think that one was just constructed. So two SCV remain after all of the Psy Storm is cleared out. So once the storm finishes, that's all that remains. These are really ninja probes. Heroes, really. They're, they've earned their uh, whatever they get paid in. Now some probes transferring to the three o'clock. That should be an indicator to Arson if he sees it happening on screen. Maybe this barracks actually will see that barrack should see, yeah, the mining that as it happens here at the three o'clock. Probes meandering out, finding that siege tanks are in fact still there. But also discovering that Arson has grabbed the bottom left hand base. <laughs> Poor probes. Imagine that command, like you were you were safe up to this stage. You you're huddled with your friends. I command you to go up and just see what's there. You're gonna die. Just FYI. Arbiter staging up to maybe attack bottom left, and that could be a very successful attack as this, there's only two siege tanks remaining. Vultures have found the probes. Oh, those poor probes. But there's the recall into the main. Command center trying to float out. Dragoons are on the job trying to focus fire it down. Siege tanks and Goliath scrambling to engage. Will it be in time? It looks like not. Command Center explodes in the air. And this is still going to be a frustrating attack force to evict from the main. Although Arson certainly has the raw personnel to make it happen. Three o'clock base is up and running for him. Nine o'clock base is up and running for him. In theory, if he can hold all of this and Arson grabs everything bottom left and he gets decent exchanges from this point on, he will end up winning just through another recall. Six o'clock location. That was lucky. Psy Storm, again obliterating those SCVs. Again, another clutch defense matrix to keep a siege tank in the fight. Troops repositioning to go ahead and engage. I don't think that command center is going to get wiped out, but that is going to halt some of Arson's income. Fisheye has a massive bank compared to Fisheye. But I don't know as far as the pure battle exchanges that have happened thus far, if Fisheye definitively has the lead. Right now, I will say that Arson's down a lot of supply. After losing bottom left and not mining at the six o'clock, he's struggling to get the troop count back up to the 200 mark. So this is creating a window for Fisheye to potentially strike. And he is grouping up with another potential Arbiter for another recall, Zealot going ahead and scooting out, do some mine clearage. It's checking that pathway. Bottom left being reconstructed. Mineral only another command center being built here to maybe go for that natural expansion. Arbiter moving once again to the six o'clock before turrets have been in place, but an EMP is going to go ahead and cancel that. Looks like I'm not sure that Fisheye recognizes that Arson's troop count First of all, is mostly in bottom left and is about half the supply of his. Otherwise, he could make an attack at the natural expansion or the main, shut down the factory lines, and there's nothing anywhere close. And if it turned into a base race, I believe that Fisheye would end up winning that overall. So right now, Arson, yeah, leaving a huge gap at the main. The factory is very, very exposed. Siege tanks again going to protect the sweet stuff, the mining. Bottom left. <clears throat> Fisheye. Another recall, though. 
bottom left. It looks like that is going to get... I think Arson anticipated it. EMP'd everything. I don't know that a lot... Okay, well, a Psy Storm is able to execute. Otherwise, that entire army is obliterated. Command Center lifted off very, very rapidly. Arson with a solid SCV count. Arbiter's going to get taken out otherwise. But yeah, this is... I think this is Fisheye's win condition. Is, is attacking the main or getting a recall over the factory line right now while all of the troops are out of position bottom left. Arson does not want to be recalled anymore. Creating a massive amount. Looks like he overbuilt command centers here. It is possible he'll make a move up to the nine... <coughs> excuse me, up to the nine o'clock. Wipe that out there. We'll have to see. Another recall now at the natural. Having trouble today keeping up with them. Two command centers to float, but again, Fisheye, as soon as he lands, it looks like because he's landing amidst the bulk of Arson's army, landing and nearly immediately losing his attack troops, but running in is again at least able to shut down that command center, force it to lift off momentarily. Arson sending in more troops to go ahead and clear it up, but I gotta say, Arson's army looking a little bit thin right here. He's got a few, after all of these recalls, it looks like they've gotten a handful of tanks and whatnot overall, so it looks like, yeah, this is gonna move in to be able to clean up bottom left, but because of the continual shutdown of the mining expansions, we've got, it looks like a handful of siege tanks, a handful of vultures, and not a lot else. So Fisheye's recalls, despite not, despite getting stopped somewhat early, are wreaking havoc on Arson's ability to keep up production-wise. Not sure if that was a Scouting Dragoon or a Miss Rally Dragoon. Fisheye going ahead and grabbing that mineral only upper right-hand corner as far as a follow-up. Big army moving out. We got a fleet of Arbiters this time. Now I'm looking for Fisheye maybe to just go for a heads-up attack. He can reproduce at any stage and Arson's very spread out. He's got some, looks like an army here that he wants to go ahead and he's leaving it unsieged so he can potentially engage at one location or another. Zelt's charging through. That's not probably their favorite engagement point as they're clearing a lot of, well, they cleared a lot of mines at the very least. Zelt's still able to get through an EMP over some initial Dragoons, but it didn't hit the Arbiters. They're getting a decent stasis to that clump of siege tanks to the west. And that is allowing Fisheye to have a massive uncontested army at the mineral only that could potentially fold down to the six o'clock location. This is a b huge amount of arson supply that's crystallized and therefore completely ineffective. Command center's gone at the mineral only. Six o'clock base is at risk. And a lot of these siege tanks could end up being forfeit. And it doesn't look like there's anything to defend these SEVs from these marauding zealots. It looks like they're gonna try to defend themselves upper left. So Fisheye finally cracking the Terran Nutshell, continuing to the six o'clock. High Templar in tow, so they could Psy Storm those SCV lines. Are they gonna get, yeah, able to SCV a huge amount of SCVs there. So Arson losing some critical mining at the six o'clock that was really keeping him in this match for both periods. Fisheye still mining at multiple locations, has a massive bank to work with, more Psy Storm over the reinforcements as they're entering. And losing the six o'clock and losing the mineral only, that is gonna be GG from Arson. Well played by Fisheye. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please, on YouTube land, please give a like and a subscribe. Let a friend know. Spread the brood war cause. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for listening.